Hi, this is Stefan Yanev, Head of Research and Development for Clean Health. I've been in the fitness industry for over 20 years and educated over 5,000 trainers across the globe. In today's video, we're going to be talking about ways to increase hypertrophy without increasing load. Now, ever since COVID-19 and a lot of people switching from training in gyms, in commercial gyms to training at home, obviously they're a lot more limited in equipment. So this is a question we've had come through a lot of times and even from clients about how do you increase hypertrophy without necessarily increasing the load? And it is possible to do that because from the standpoint of increasing hypertrophy, what's most important is that we reach a point of muscle fatigue. It's generally now agreed between most hypertrophy experts that the training stimulus really comes from those last five or so repetitions as we approach failure. Those are the repetitions where we're able to tap into those highest threshold murder units. In other words, those murder units which innovate the most amount of muscle fibers, especially our most powerful and biggest muscle fibers, the fast twitch fibers. How we get there is actually much less important. So as long as we get to that point of fatigue, whether we did 15 reps, 20 reps, slow tempo, fast tempo, or whatever load was on the bar is actually not as important. So when we're looking at ways that we can basically increase hypertrophy without increasing load, we're looking for ways that we can fatigue the muscle without putting more load on the bar. And there's several ways we can go about doing that. One simple way to do that is simply by just doing more reps. So if you can do eight, 10 repetitions of a certain weight and you're not able to increase the weight, increase the number of reps. Do 12, 15, 20 repetitions with that same weight. If you can normally do eight reps with a given weight, and you work up to doing 15, 20 reps with the same weight, you will definitely have increased your muscle size because that weight now represents a smaller percentage of your maximum weight. So you've increased your work capacity. Another way we can fatigue the muscle quicker without increasing load is reducing the rest periods. By resting less in between exercises, more metabolites are gonna accumulate, we're gonna have greater level of fatigue, and as a result, over the certain amount of sets, we will end up fatiguing and reaching a point of failure with a weight that normally, let's say if we're using full rest periods, may take us a lot longer to reach failure or maybe not even reach failure at all. So using higher density methods such as short rest periods, using supersets, trisets, anything where we're shortening the rest, we're able to fatigue the muscle uh, in a quicker time frame using the same load. Another way we can do it is by slowing down the tempo. So taking the same load but performing the repetition slower and really intentionally focusing on creating an internal torque and squeezing the muscle as we perform the movement, that will really, because eliminating momentum and creating that internal torque, will allow us to fatigue much quicker with a much lighter weight. So that's an excellent method if we're limited by how much weight we can lift, focusing on really squeezing the muscle, slowing down the tempo, and fatiguing ourselves with that lighter weight. Another option we have is using pause reps. So pausing at certain points in the lift, especially in disadvantageous position in the lift. So say for example, we're doing a lateral raise where we're weakest at the top of the movement. Well, if each repetition we pause for a few seconds at the top of the movement, we will fatigue a lot quicker than if we just did constant repetitions through the full range, through the concentric and eccentric phase without pausing at the isometric. Another way we can do it is simply just doing isometric holds. So taking a certain dumbbell, and let's say if we're performing lateral raises, instead of doing the exercise through the full range of motion, going through the concentric and eccentric phase, we just extend out to the shortened range or the peak contraction, that point of exercise where we're weakest, and we just hold that position until a point of fatigue. Or let's say with squats, we can basically go down to 90 degrees, hold that position until we fatigue. So by going to our weakest position of a certain exercise and just holding that position, we're maximally under load for the entire time. Whereas if we're performing an exercise through the full range, obviously it's gonna be part of the movements where the muscle's gonna be under less load because of levers and also at certain positions, the muscle may be completely under rest. And as a result, we're not gonna fatigue as quickly. So a way that we can force fatigue much quicker using the same way is just going straight to that disadvantageous position and holding the weight in that position. So hopefully that gives you a few ways and methods that you can use, especially if you're training at home with limited weights, that you can still fatigue the muscles adequately and induce a hypertrophic stimulus. If you enjoyed this video from Clean Health, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below.